Hello and welcome to this video on doing one-sided hypothesis tests on the mean with a known variance. A hypothesis test answers a question based on data. And as an example for this video, we'll look at uh, some fictional data about computer engineering salaries. So suppose that the national average salary for a software engineer is $90,000. And suppose that you somehow manage to find the salaries of a couple of engineers in your company and you want to test whether or not the salaries in your company are on the order of the nationwide industry average. So with this data we'll do a hypothesis test. This shows the process of doing the hypothesis test on the mean with the known variance. The first thing we need to do is define our hypothesis 0, our null hypothesis, and H1, our alternative hypothesis. So let's assume in this example that you're pretty sure that your company pays below the national average and you want to test that hypothesis. So in that case, your hypothesis 0 would be that mu, which is the population mean, and in this case since the samples are coming from software engineers in your company, mu would be the population mean, that is the mean of all of the salaries of software engineers in your company. We would have the null hypothesis mu is $90,000 and the alternate hypothesis mu is less than $90,000. If we go back to the process, the next step is to compute the sample mean from the data. Okay, so this is a spreadsheet that has the salary data. I have here the salary of seven software engineers and our first step is to compute X bar which is the sample mean. So to do that I use the average function of the seven salaries. Okay, so the next step is to compute Z0, our test statistic. To compute Z0 we take the sample mean which we just computed, we subtract from the sample mean the mean under hypothesis 0 which in this case is again $90,000. We then divide by the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of samples. Okay so having computed Z0 our next step is to either compute the p-value p or to be given a confidence level and alpha and from that alpha find Z alpha and then compare Z0 to Z alpha. We'll show both methods. We'll start by computing the p-value. So as a reminder the p-value is the probability of observing a sample mean that is at least as extreme as X bar given H0. So what I have here is the graph of a sampling distribution this is the distribution of Z0 and Z0 has been normalized so it has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. We are doing a lower one-sided test here. In this case my value of Z0 falls somewhere here. My p-value again being the probability of observing a sample mean that is at least as extreme as the sample mean we observed is going to be the probability under this tail of the distribution. So this is a probability that my test statistic is less than this value Z0. If we go back to our spreadsheet, we compute our p-value norm s dist of Z0. Norm s dist gives us the area under the density function to the left of Z0. And when we compute that we get a p-value of 0 0.0274 etc. This p-value is pretty small, and with a p-value this small, we would feel reasonably confident about rejecting hypothesis zero. That is, we would reject the hypothesis that our company pays at about the national average. Now, another way to approach this problem is to be given an alpha, or a confidence level. From this alpha, we would compute Z alpha, which will tell us our critical region. So to take this approach, we're given a value of alpha, which in this case is 0.05, and we want to compute Z alpha. 
For a one-sided test, Z alpha is given by norm S inverse 1 minus the value of alpha. That gives us 1.645 more or less. So if we go back to our test, we have a lower test. So we're looking at a decision region that looks like this. This value here is minus Z alpha, where again, Z alpha is chosen so that this area under the sampling distribution is equal to our alpha, which is 0 0.05. And the question is, is Z zero less than minus Z alpha? And in this case, the obvious answer is yes. So basically what this tells us is that our data allows us to reject the null hypothesis that our company's salaries are about the same as the national average. So being somewhat disappointed that the average salary in your company is below the national average, you decide to determine if the average salary in your company is above the average salary for software engineers in the locale where you live. So now the hypothesis test will be, our null hypothesis is that the average salary in your company is equal to 74,000, where this would be the average salary in the locale where you live, and H1, the average salary is greater than 74,000. So this now defines your hypothesis test. Going through the steps quickly, the first thing to do is again compute X bar from the data and this will be the same as your last X bar. Now we compute Z zero, which is X bar minus mu zero, divided by our standard deviation, divided by the square root of N, our number of samples. And now we need to compute the P value for this test. This is an upper one-sided test, so our P value is going to be the probability of getting an observation that is at least as extreme as the one we got, and this is the probability from Z0 up to infinity. We can manipulate this probability into one that we can use on a spreadsheet as follows. This probability is 1 minus the probability that our statistic is less than the value we've chosen Z0. So we can use this to compute the p-value as follows. Our p-value is 1 minus norm s dist of our Z0, and so here we get a p-value of 0.1835. That p-value is fairly large, which means that we really can't reject H0. So the data tell us that we can't say that our company pays above average for its locale. Now again, we could also solve this problem by being given an alpha and computing a z-alpha. In this case, we compute z-alpha as norm s-i-n-v of 1 minus alpha. So that gives us a Z alpha of 1.645 more or less. So in this case, our Z alpha is up here to give us a 0 0.05 probability. And because our Z zero is less than Z alpha, we are not able to reject the null hypothesis H zero. So that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.